Hi friends. Okay, today we are going to be talking about definitely the biggest question I am constantly getting asked, which is self-learning or coding boot camps. Which one do you do? Before we start this video though, I want to do a special shout out to the user who asked for this video to be made. If you have any topics that you want to be covered, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Also on that note, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like for more tech and coding videos. I'm really excited to do this video because as someone who has kind of explored both options, the self-learning and then eventually coding bootcamp, I feel like I can really talk about it, the pros and cons of both. When I started learning how to code, I started with self-learning. I thought, let's see if this is something I'm actually interested in, if I want to pursue this as a career or if it's more going to be a hobby. So I decided to go the self-learning route to begin with to just kind of dip my toes, dip my toes into the water, I guess you could say. And from there, when I realized that this is what I want to do, I switched and ended up going to a coding bootcamp. When I started thinking about how I want to structure this video, there were three pillars that stood out to me. One being structure, the other being self-learning, and the third being ROI or return on investment. These three things that really will depict which is best for you, whether it's self-learning or going to a coding bootcamp. I'm going to break down each pillar and kind of explain to you why I think that these are so important to really take a look at when deciding if going to a coding bootcamp or self-learning is right for you. The first one being structure. And what I mean by structure is when you're learning any new skill, you need to have a structure timeline or kind of a plan in place of how this learning process is going to go. You want to know, okay, once I learn this, then the next step is this, and kind of make a staircase that you know, once you've achieved this goal for learning, you will keep on moving up. And that is really well laid out for most coding boot camps. However, when you are self-learning, it's something that you really need to consider if you are able to give yourself that. On the other side of things, when you are doing self-learning, you do have that benefit of online courses being able to structure and lay things out for you. So you do get that too. The problem with the structure comes in that with coding boot camps, you are there or held accountable to getting your work done in the sense that if you don't get this assignment done or complete this next step, then there's going to be a penalty. Typically, I'm not saying for all coding boot camps, but from my experience, if you don't get this done, you're not going to be able to move on. So there's that added pressure of actually completing the task at hand, completing the course you need to get to the next step. Whereas with self-learning, it's more so that's on you. You have to be able to hold yourself accountable to the structure that you've laid out. And I see this so often with people who are doing self-learning that they have a structure laid out, they're ready to go, but they quickly lose motivation. Imagine sitting in a room by yourself, learning how to code, learning this new skill, and there's no one there to encourage you, ask you questions, or motivate you, push you forward. And that can be very easy then to get off the structure or path that you have planned. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's impossible. I actually have so much admiration and respect for people who are self-learning developers. One of the main reasons being because it takes so much persistence and so much self-discipline. So I think you really need to take a look at who you are inside, your learning abilities, your learning style. Are you someone that can stay to the path at hand, stay with the structure, or are you going to need someone to kind of make sure you stay on the structure or a path that you have going for you? Also something else I want to quickly point out is I often get messages from people who are doing the self-learning path but don't even know where to start. They message me saying, well, what's the best programming language? What What is the best framework? And listen, if you are someone who is going the self-learning route, one thing that you will really need to get comfortable with is Googling. Googling things. Googling. That sounds such a funny word when you say it. Googling. Googling. You know what I mean. If you are someone who is doing the self-learning route or considering doing the self-learning route, you really need to be comfortable with trusting your instinct, trusting your gut and Googling. I always say to people when they come to me with that question, well, have you looked on what job postings are hiring for? Have you looked on what top skills are in demand right now? Like do your research, look at the courses, look at what is in demand rather than just relying on other people to tell you. Don't get me wrong, I love answering questions and helping anyone that comes my way, but at the end of the day, you need to start taking charge and answering your own questions. And that brings me to my next pillar, which is learning style. You really need to know what is your learning style. And a lot of people don't even know what their learning style is. You went to say, 
your formal education, graduated, and now you're in the workforce, you've never really had to decide if you needed to learn something completely on your own, or if you wanted to continue down going the path of having more of a formal education, I guess you could say, formal meaning, um, going to an institute, or nowadays everything's virtual, so attending an online class. You really need to know what is best suited for you. And there is a really way to understand which kind of learning style is best suited for you until you dive in and start practicing. So I really like my learning path I took with coding because I think it was the best of both worlds. I started, as I mentioned, with self-learning and teaching myself how to code. And once I kind of hit a wall that I knew I needed some help, my learning style was kind of, I realized it was definitely more that I needed someone to help guide me or be there for me if I had any questions than the other style where it's like self-learning, you got this, you're on your own, you just need to figure it out. And I think that's really important too, that if you're able to, if you have the time, maybe start self-learning and then if you are really enjoying it, but feeling at a certain point you are getting stuck or just can't kind of get over that hump, I guess you could say, before you decide if going a coding bootcamp route or self-learning route is right for you, really check in with yourself and see, are you someone who can hold yourself accountable? And by that, I mean, when you go to a coding bootcamp, you know, you're going to have different projects which have deadlines. And that doesn't happen when you're doing self-learning. You can set these deadlines, but if you don't meet them, there's nothing that's going to happen. There's no immediate consequence. Whereas in a formal school setting, there is, you know, if you don't meet this deadline, then you fail the class or fail the course, whatever it is. The third pillar you need to consider is past technical experience. If you are someone who has a very technical background or say you went to school a bit for computer science or coding, then self-learning might be very easy for you. Something that you have the basics down pat and you can kind of grow off of that on your own. If you are someone who's never even written one line of code and you decide to go the self-learning path, it's going to be a struggle. I'm not saying don't do it because I think it's a great way. Please don't take this away that I'm saying don't do self-learning, but it's going to be tough. Especially if you don't have anyone in your life that isn't a programmer, it will make it quite a bit harder. I know because this is my experience, I didn't have anyone, any friends or family who were in the tech industry or specifically coded. However, if you are someone who maybe has a bit of a technical background or technical experience, self-learning might be the right way for you. You will already have a lot of the basics down, as I mentioned, and kind of explored this industry. So it will be easier to do self-learning for you. Okay, this pillar I didn't mention, but I wanna talk about it, which is environment. If you are someone who has five kids running around, a very busy household and X, Y, and Z, it might be tough to do self-learning, to find that quiet time. And I'm not saying everyone has the luxury or time to attend a coding bootcamp, so it might be the only option you have and you just kind of make it work. It's a priority, you make it work in the evening or in the mornings. And I think I just, once again, have so much respect for people who do that. I think that's absolutely incredible. But if you are someone who maybe has, you know, three or four roommates and they like to party and it's loud and same, you know, situation in the sense that it's a very chaotic environment, a coding bootcamp might be a better idea for you in the sense that you can actually physically remove yourself from your environment and attend the coding bootcamp. If it's a virtual coding bootcamp, at least you still have to hold yourself accountable to attending the classes every day. And when there's a chaotic environment around, it's easy to kind of push off our priorities or responsibilities uh, until a later date. Whereas if you have to actually attend classes, it's more, you're held more accountable. Okay, to sum it up, what is my advice? If I could give any advice on if you should go the self-learning or coding bootcamp path, it would be this. Start with self-learning, explore coding, see if it's something you're actually interested in. And then if you're able to focus and hit those goals and milestones that you have out for yourself, then maybe it is a really good way for you. But if you are someone who, even after a certain point with self-learning, you feel like, you know what? I need the extra help, I need the extra support, the community that coding bootcamps bring, then that is when you should really consider attending a coding bootcamp. Another thing I want to highlight is the networking factor. If you are self-learning, self-teaching, and you don't know anyone else in the tech industry, you're really going to have to strengthen your networking skills. Alongside learning a new programming language and these technical skills, as well, you are going to have to start networking and putting yourself out there because I'm sure at the end of the day, the goal is to get a job. Or if it's not to get a job, maybe it's to get some clients, which same thing, you're going to have to start networking, putting your brand out there, putting it on social media, LinkedIn, wherever it is that you, you feel comfortable with, but you need to make yourself known. 
Whereas with coding boot camps, it's a little bit easier, a tiny bit easier, I would say, because they already provide you with a ton of the resources for networking, uh, the companies they work with, the name behind the coding boot camp, but you still have to do the work as far as actually proving that you have the skill set and networking with these companies. No one can just hand it to you on a silver platter. Um, you still have to put in the work, but I do think self-learning will require a little bit more of that. Also, if you are doing self-learning, I would suggest to look into different certifications online, such as free code camp certification. Udemy has a ton of certifications that you can take to kind of add to your resume to pad it up a bit with certifications. I know it's not necessary, but some employers are still kind of old school and they want to see the certification thing. Thank you all for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments other videos you want to see and I will make sure to do videos on them as well. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more tech and coding videos and I will see you soon. Thanks everyone.